it's not correct that there is such a thing as biological sex. Now, does that sound subjective? We shouldn't be talking about free speech. BC police stop abusing students. Hate violence. Hate propaganda. Hate violence. Hate propaganda. Disdain, dislike, hate speech. The PC police are in your heads. You're next. Keep it in mind. You're next. Keep it in mind. Gender pronouns and the slippery slope of C16. Hi. I'm Justin Antitheist, and this is my view on Bill C-16 as a member of the LBGTQIO community, the O is for other kin, and as a transpersonal entity who identifies as a transabled, pre-op, male-to-female-to-male, transgender Native American, so that makes me two-spirit, and as a pansexual pandemon, and a fifth-wave feminist whose pronoun is politically correct indoctrination and regressive left dogma is corrosive to an ethical, civil, and sane society. So, in accordance with identity politics and intersectional theory, you have to hear me out, or else you're committing violence and racism. Oh, and I'm not satanic, I'm just having fun. The purpose of this video is not to argue about what Bill C-16 will or will not do. The point is, whether or not C-16 is a step on a slippery slope, there are plenty of people who are trying to push us down a slippery slope. Let's hope they fail. In the recent debates revolving around Canada's Bill C-16, which some argue will force people to say certain words, that is the new gender pronouns, and not say other words, that is the wrong gender pronouns. Pronoun misuse may become actionable through the human rights tribunals and the courts, and the remedies, monetary damages, non-financial remedies, for example, ceasing the discriminatory practice or reinstatement to the job, and public interest remedies, for example, changing hiring practices or developing non-discriminatory policies and procedures, Jail time is not one of them. Jordan, you're not going to go to jail if you keep this up. Do you, you find that uh, reassuring? What if I don't pay the fine? And which some argue will not. Look, I think it's a common misconception about Bill C-16 that it's somehow going to make um, pronoun use into hate speech. I have noticed a certain pattern. Some people argue that people who say that C-16 will force people to use the new gender pronouns in some contexts are making a slippery slope fallacy. That it is wrong thing to think that it will lead to more censorship and more forced speech. Often these are the very same people who are pushing things down the slippery slope that they deny exists. Exists. So, for example, Nicholas Matt argues that we should not worry that C-16 will infringe on freedom of speech. But this very same person argues that Professor Jordan Peterson's formal declaration that he will not obey 16 if it does force speech is abuse of trans students and violence. I don't, uh, I don't agree with why Dr. Peterson has been asked to stop abusing students on campus. To stop doing what? Abusing students. I see and other members of our learning community who do deserve respect and do deserve to be able to work and learn and contribute to society in a place where if they are physically assaulted. And he denies assaults that took place that millions of us have seen on video. Um, the assaults so far came from the social justice warriors who were at this free speech rally and almost two million people have watched those accurate. so far. This is not accurate. Well, you can look you at the videos actioned. yourself. Let's look at them ourselves. Can I be clear on something? You, you've accused him of abusing students by not using the pronouns they want to be addressed That's by. That's how I see it, absolutely. That is tantamount to abuse in your view. Absolutely. Many, many global documents, many organizations. About violence. Is it tantamount to violence? Yes. How about absolutely. hate speech? 
Is it tantamount to yes, hate speech? Yes, of course, it's hate speech. This perfectly reasonable and rational person who would never want to push us down a slippery slope has, on television, with a straight face, claimed that Jordan Peterson's declaration to not obey a law if it forces him to say certain words in some contexts is abuse, violence, and hate speech. Totally trustworthy, totally good-natured, tolerant, and not at all vindictive or bent on revenge. Someone you can trust with power, to be fair, for sure. No danger of a slippery slope here. This is the same person who is a lecturer at the University of Toronto and, with a straight face, on television makes the claim that... It's not correct that there is such a thing as biological sex, and I'm a historian of medicine, I can unpack that for you at great length if you want, but in the interest of time, uh, I won't. So that's a very popular misconception. So and when he says... So we're not actually talking, we shouldn't be talking about free speech. What we should be talking about are the social issues facing people who are being discriminated against. You should totally agree with him because, you know, to hell with free speech. The privilege of a certain group is more important than universal rights. In a discussion at the University of Toronto last month regarding... Gender provisions and implications of Bill C-16 and the Ontario Human Rights Code. Professor of Law Brenda Cosman says that C-16 pertains to, among other things, violence, and that the failure to use the new gender pronouns will not be considered to be violence. Public incitement of hatred. Well, the provisions of the criminal code requires that the incitement is likely to lead to a breach of the peace. Now, does that sound subjective? Yes, it does, because some of these people define everything as being subjective. Well, the Supreme Court of Canada has said there's a very clear, there's a very clear definition. The threshold is violence. In fact, there has to be personal violence. It is an extremely high threshold. Is it? Will it be in a few years? Not if these agenda pushers get their way. These people are trying to redefine the language so that it is violence to not use the right gender pronouns. Is it tantamount to violence? Yes. Violence? Yes. Violence? Yes. And again, the misuse of pronouns doesn't come anywhere close. Except that it does. In fact, right now there is a campaign to charge somebody for calling Mary she. There's a link for this and for everything else in the video description below, of course. Finally, the willful promotion of hatred, so-called hate speech provisions. Now, hate speech provisions um, in the criminal code have a very, very high threshold. The Supreme Court of Canada has repeatedly defined hate speech as only including the most extreme forms of speech. The court has said over and over again, and I quote, it is, quote, the unusually strong and deep felt emotions of vilification and detestation. The court has said it is not disdain, it is not dislike, it is not offense. Plus, something that's often lost, hate speech criminal charges cannot be laid without the approval of the Attorney General. So this is a high threshold. They are very difficult charges to bring. Oh, really? Well, not if people like this get their way. How about Absolutely. hate speech? Is it tantamount to yes, hate speech? Yes, of course. It's hate speech Fine, to tell someone that you won't refer to them as a in a way that they uh, that recognizes their humanity and dignity. Notice, by the way, his smug incredulity, as if to say, how could anyone be so stupid to not know that the misuse of gender pronouns is abuse, violence, and hate speech? <laughs> Duh. Professor Brenda Kosman and Professor Mary Bryson argue that C-16 will not lead down a slippery slope to more censorship and more compelled speech, but Bryson demonstrates that they are ready to push us down a slippery slope when they let the following slip. And a lot of what we've been hearing here is hate propaganda. When nothing remotely hateful was said at all. See for yourself. Watch the entire video. There's a link in the video description below. They just can't keep it in their pants, can they? They've got a bullet in the chamber and they have to shoot their load. They reveal their radical, irrational, extremist agenda for all of us to see. By the way, in that witch hunt campaign to punish the person who referred to Mary as she and not as they, they are demanding that the university denounce criticisms that Mary has received in both her private and her public life and on social media, etc. Somehow the university has to denounce these third parties. Yeah. No joke. Read it yourself. I'm not kidding. See the link in the video description below. Sure, there's no slippery slope at all. We're dealing with perfectly reasonable people with no agendas. Look, if you're not stupid, you recognize that these people are witch hunters. They are the politically correct inquisition. Sometimes they openly proclaim that their agenda is to destroy the Western civilization, and at other times they're not so upfront about that. 
Can I be clear on something? You, you've accused him of abusing students by not using the pronouns they want to be addressed That's by. That's how I see it, absolutely. There are terms for this tactic of making constant changes to suit your agenda. Concept creep, incrementalism. It's making changes in increments one step at a time down a slippery slope. There is the deliberate incrementalist concept creep that redefines things further and further to serve an agenda, redefining things like abuse, violence, and hate speech. Can I be clear on something? You, you've accused him of abusing students by not using the pronouns they want to be addressed That's by. That's how I see it, absolutely. That is tantamount to abuse in your view. Absolutely. Many, many global documents, many how organizations. Is it tantamount to violence? Yes, How absolutely. about hate speech? Is it tantamount to yes, hate speech? Yes, of course, it's hate speech. And hate propaganda. And a lot of what we've been hearing here is hate propaganda. And step-by-step, step, violence is redefined to include disagreements or leaving a room. Rape is defined to include farts. Microaggressions are redefined so as to be unfalsifiable because, as I showed in my video on microaggressions, they are defined as being valid if they are nothing more than the subjective, experiential reality of people of color, and saying that you will not obey laws that violate freedom of speech is abuse, violence, and hate speech. It seems to me that the same people who would have been behind Bill C-16 would be the same people who want to redefine what things like violence and hate speech are, the same people who want to push us all down a slippery slope. I urge you to watch these debates in their entirety, see the links in the video description below. You will see that they explicitly argue against freedom of speech in a false dichotomy which favors the feelings of certain groups of people over constitutional rights. We no longer seem to care about people. And this, at the end of the day, is about people. It's about trans and gender non-binary people. These are our children, our siblings, our nieces, our nephews. These are our friends, our neighbors, our colleagues, our lawyers, our carpenters, and our teachers. How bloody hard is it to simply treat these people with respect and dignity? By the way, when you argue for special rights for some but not for others, you're discriminating against certain groups, and you're a bigot. All this is about, all human rights are about, is respect and dignity. Respect and dignity for groups, but not for all individuals, I guess. It seems very clear that there is a very real danger of a slippery slope because people who are in positions of authority, mind you, are bent on pushing us down that slippery slope. As I have shown in my video on microaggressions, some of these people have an agenda to redefine the objective as the subjective. They think that everything is equally subjective and nothing is objective. And yes, of course, Socrates, Plato, Rene Descartes, Kurt Gödel's incompleteness theorem, etc. Nothing can be known for sure, and everything possibly is ultimately subjective. But it is philosophically naive to consider everything to be equally subjective. Also, that's an extremely unwise path to go down. Why? Well, because... When, when children are two years old, that's what they think. They think that their subjective reality is everything. And, and if you think everything is subjective, by the way, I invite you to go up to the top of a tall building, believe that you can fly, and jump off of it. In closing, I again urge you to watch the full videos of these debates and see, for example, that Professor Peterson's academic disagreement was denounced as hate propaganda. And a lot of what we've been hearing here is hate propaganda. But I will leave you with Peterson's words and a famous poem. I have in fact been denounced today. And what I am saying has in fact been described as hate propaganda. So one thing I'd like to suggest to you, every single person in the audience, you're next. So keep it in mind. First, they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Thank you for watching this video, folks. Please subscribe to this channel, and whether or not you've already subscribed, you do have to click on this little bell icon in order to get notifications for future videos because YouTube's fucking stupid. Also, if you've been unsubscribed from my channel, I am sorry. We do not know why, but YouTube has been doing this to YouTube channels that are controversial, so you may want to resubscribe. Also, consider joining Minds.com. Minds.com, I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever, but they are anti-censorship. It's like Facebook, and it's like YouTube without the bullshit of either one of those. So Minds.com may be the future to replace both of these bullshit motherfucking websites that we all hate, but we all have to deal with because we don't have an alternative. Well, Minds.com, that's the alternative. See you next time, folks.